In this coding exercise, we are going to walk through how we can search through a nested set of collections. So if you look at the test, this has a collection of books, and technically books is simply an array, but it is an array that includes any number of hashes. Now this specific one just has two hashes, and the hashes have key value pairs that have a title, an author, and they have their respective values. So for the hash one, the title's Fountainhead, author's Ayn Rand, and the second one, the title's Deep Work, the author is Cal Newport, two of my very favorite books in the world. So this is going to be our list, but what we need to do, if you come up here, is say that our collection search should check to see if a value is included in any number of hashes nested inside an array. So coming down to the expectation, the expectation is that we should be able to call books and pass the message of value included. So this is going to be a method and because we're calling it on books, this means we're going to have to open up the array class and create a method called value included and then pass in a string and what it is going to do is it's going to return a true or false based on if it finds that either book or author inside. Now that's something that's kind of important to note is that what our method needs to do is not just to look for titles, but also through authors and imagine that you had five other parameters. It would look for everything. It simply is going to parse the values. So let's take a quick look at what this actually, how this is actually going to work. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here and let's give ourselves a little bit of room. I'm going to come back and indent this just so we have some data to work with. Now let's actually open up the array class. So I'm going to say array and our method is going to be called value included with a question mark and that is going to take one argument. We can call it element. So remember that whenever we have a method in Ruby that ends in a question mark, the convention is that that method should return a Boolean value, which means that it should return either a true or a false value. So now inside of this, let's talk about what we're gonna have to do. First, we are going to have to iterate. So that tells me that we're going to use the each iterator, the enumerable method, and that we're going to have a block, and I'm going to pass in i for the block variable. Now inside of here, this, and you may have noticed if you went through the exercise where we were replicating the include method for the array, this is very similar, but this is going to be slightly different because it's going to be working through a hash. And so the way that this is going to be implemented is we're going to say return true if i, which remember i is our block variable up here. So we're going to say if i has value. Now has value is a method provided to us with hashes. So i has value element. And so I'm going to save this and it's not ready to be run quite yet, but I want to show you what this has value is. So say that I have books and I'm simply going to grab the first book. If I run this code, what we're going to see is we're going to see that the first book gets returned, the Fountainhead and Anne Rand. Now has value, oh, I didn't mean to copy that. So has value, if I come here and say has value question mark and then pass in Fountainhead, if I can spell it correctly. Now if I run this code, you'll see that has value is a method that you can call on a hash. So this is simply going to look at a specific hash like the one that we selected right here, and then has value lets you call it and say, is this value that we're passing in right here, is this the value for that specific 
hash and it's going to return either true or false. So that is all that we're doing here is that we're saying that we want to have the ability for this to return true if the current hash, because what we're doing here with each, we're iterating over each one of the elements in the books array. So we're simply saying the first time around, we're going through book one, second time around, we're going through book two, and it's going to then call on that specific hash, whether it's book one, book two, or book 5,000, it's going to call each one of those and say, does this value, so does the value in the hash, does it equal this element? So that is this, and this is a cleaner way of doing it as opposed to parsing the hash and then uh, you know, doing double equals for equivalence. This simply says, does the value of this hash, and remember, this is the value, this is the key, so it's looking at the right-hand side, and it's gonna say, does that exist? If so, return true. If not, it's just gonna keep on iterating. Remember, because we're forcing this to return true, what this means is that the very first time that it finds the value, it's simply going to break out, not just of this each block, it's actually gonna break out of the entire method and it's gonna return true, which is very handy, because the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna return false. So this is the false is only gonna be hit if return true is never hit. So let's test this out. We're going to call books, and now we should be able to just call value included, and if I pass in some gibberish, this should return false. So if I run this code, that's perfect, so that returns false. And now if I come here and I change this to say Cal Newport, and run this, this returns true. So that is working perfectly. Let's clear off some of our test content here. And I'm gonna save that. And now let's actually open up a, another, uh, let's open up another session. And that way we can actually run our tests. So I'm gonna say RSpec, and January 20th, and there you go. One example, zero failure. So our tests are passing, which means that it is finding the books when they should be found, or it's finding the values when they should be found, and it's returning false when they are not found. So great job in going through that. That's a very important kind of concept to understand whenever you're working, especially with collection intensive kind of application. So for example, Rails is very collection intensive. You're gonna be working with arrays with nested hashes quite often and having the ability to be able to understand one, how they work, but then also how to parse through them and to find values is very important. So nice work.